Hey, what's going on guys? Reed here and I'm back with another tech video. And I'm finally back, as some people would say. But anyways, this video is going to be about how to use Basilisk 2 to emulate System 7.5.3. And this is the macOS version. So basically, I know I already put up this video, but I just wanted to do a little bit of a remastered kind of one. Because I feel like the other video I did wasn't really that good. Especially what with the error at the end, which I found the solution to and all that. So we're going to go ahead and jump right into this. You shouldn't really need anything except a Mac and an internet connection for this. And also, if you're on Windows, please do feel free to check out my Windows version. I have a Windows version of this video for Windows, of course. But we're going to jump right into this. So just all you need, Mac and internet connection, and I'll be right back on the Mac screen. Okay, hey guys, I am back. We're here on the Mac. Hey, that rhymed. Well, I've got my guide pulled up right here. This is basically the guide that I follow for this from Immaculation.com. Immaculation.com, I highly suggest you have this guide up so that you can use the links and stuff, which I will not provide in the description except for the link to this guide because they're all right here. And the Immaculation is a great source for all emulator-related stuff. It's got the main emulators here. And there's even some games and software for it down here. But anyways, we're, we're going to be focusing on Basilisk 2 in this case. So first thing you're going to want to do is go into Finder and you can go to any folder you want. I'm going to use Downloads, create a new folder, call it Basilisk 2 or whatever name you want. I prefer Basilisk 2 because it's memorable and it exactly describes what this is about so then now you need to visit this link here download your basilisk 2 build so if you're running an older one like lion through sierra go ahead and use this if you're running high sierra through catalina which i am i'm going to download this so you'll notice it starts to download up here and this is only the application there's a few other things we need so if you want a basilisk 2 key codes file anything that is not an english united states qwerty keyboard and you're going to want to use this to get the other ones if you, it it's not necessary if you're using an English QWERTY keyboard, but I'm going to download it just in case. An important note if you're using Catalina is that the Basilisk 2 application is 32-bit only. So there's a public beta of a new one right here. This, you're going to want to use this if you're going to be running Catalina. And then also scroll down a bit. The, 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 like the disk images that Basilisk 2 GUI will create are really not really like they're just a different extension than what we're going to be using so you're going to, want to also download hfs utils GUI only if you're using the beta basilisk 2 GUI and basically this is a special tool i already have it downloaded so it just created a copy but basically it's a special tool that is made entirely just to create disk images so then that's all good we've already downloaded all that put all these items in your basilisk 2 folder key codes, the GUI, what? Okay, it's not moving, okay, there we go. And also, you can leave this outside of the folder if you want, but basically there's some things we have to do. So if your Mac has a retina screen, mine doesn't, then you're gonna need to make sure Basilisk 2, the application will run in low resolution mode. So in the finder, just select the Basilisk 2 icon, choose get info, and place a check mark next to open in low resolution. Basilisk 2 GUI, you got that. You also need a floppy disk image to boot the Mac. So we're going to download that right there. Now there's an important step you have to do on this, otherwise it's not going to boot. You, first of all, after you move it, you need to right click it or control click. Click get info and check the box that says locked. It needs to be locked so that it will consider that it cannot be modified. Now note that you probably want to make sure to lock it after you moved it because if I move this to a different folder right now it's going to just create a copy of it. So then you also need a ROM file. So to get a ROM I just search redundant robot sheep shaver. Now I know we're not using sheep shaver but this guy redundant robot he's provided a lot of good ROMs. They're all down here. For Basilisk 2 you're going to want the performer ROM. So that's so now that's downloaded I'm just going to go ahead and Put that in my Basilisk 2 folder. So we got a few things in here, as you can see. There's a little more to do, though. You got the key codes file. I already went over that. Now we need a shared folder. 
basically this is a folder that will appear as a Unix disk on the desktop in the classic Mac OS. So I'm just going to call it shared, put it within Basilisk 2, and basically it'll sh it's like a way to transfer files between it. Because it, if you put files in, or folders in here, it will show up in the Unix disk on, on the in Basilisk 2. So the next thing we need to do is download the 19 installer parts. This is the more tedious part right here. So just go ahead and just click on all these. Okay, mine looks like it's going a little slow for a sec, but... And make sure you don't miss even a single one or the install will not work. So I'm just going to go ahead and click all these. And, you, and I'd always check, make sure you got them all before you close out of that page. So I've downloaded them all. Next thing you're going to do is you're going to want to double click every single one of these and expand them. The first one will have a .SMI extension, the, next, the rest of them should have a .part extension. So I'm just doing that. And you have to do this about 19 times and that's what I mean when I say tedious. Basically, what we're going to do is we're going to expand all these, and once we're done expanding all these, we're not going to, whoops, open two at once. You, if, if that happens, this part dot part two, you can trash that if you do that by mistake. I've done, I've done that many times. I, sometimes I'm not real precise, so I guess that's why. But basically, okay, so we've expanded all these. Now you're going to move all of these into your shared folder. I like to just move them into Basilisk 2 first. Trash all of these dot bins. All of these bin files you don't need, but keep the part and SMI ones. Those are important. These bin files are basically just archives of these dot parts. These dot part, they're just called installer parts. These part images are, they're not parts, they're, they're all archives of these files, let's just say. Oh, and you can also trash this once you've got your ROM file from it. So what, when you do this, once, did I move something? Okay, there we go. Well, once you've done this, it should put them in order once you've got copied them all to the Basilisk 2 folder. So that would be a great time to check that you've actually got all the installer parts. So you'll notice they're all in order. One, two, three, four, and so on. I'm going to go count those real quick. Okay, looks like I missed 14. Then all you can do, it's that easy, just download it and repeat. So, there we go. So there, now we should be all set. Now note that it will not put it in order. The one you just downloaded, it'll put it at the bottom. But other than that, I think we got them all. Just So once you've confirmed that, just move them into shared. So I got them all, they're all in there. Then I'm gonna go ahead and go back to the guide here. We sh now we have everything we need. Now we're gonna run, if you're doing HFS utils GUI, which you should be because the beta doesn't support the file extension we want, go ahead and run that. You might, you, you might get this error right here. If that happens, just right click it and click open. And just click open again. So what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna create a couple images here. We're going to just create a new one. I'm going to call it Mac OS. This is going to be the hard drive image that you're going to install to. So give it a name that you want. Make sure the label is the same as the name. That's how I like it. Gosh, okay. Make sure it's a .img. You can give it a size between 500 megabytes and 1 gigabyte is recommended. So of course I can spare the space. I'm sure all of you can. But if you can't, just do 500 megabytes. I'm going to do 1 gigabyte. Make sure this is HFS and just press save. You'll get, you'll get this. It only takes usually a few seconds if you're creating a small image. And this is a handy tool. I like to keep HFS Utils GUI even after I'm done doing Basilisk 2. Because it's a great tool for creating images. You can use it with really any emulator. So whoops, why did I close that? But it, So make sure it was saved to your Basilisk 2 folder too. Now you're going to create another image and call it installer parts. And you're going to save that also into your Basilisk 2. Make it a .img. Give it a label of installer parts. 
and make sure it is a size of five of not five hundred one hundred megabytes. Make sure it's HFS. Press save. This one goes quicker than the one gigabyte. You should be able to close it now. So now we can actually run the Basilisk 2 GUI. Just run it. Get that error. Once again, you need to con control click or right click it. Then, okay, here we are. It's open. First thing you're going to need to do is you're going to go to add. And you're going to add your floppy disk, your disk tools. You're also going to add your installer parts. And you're going to add your Mac OS. Should pop up right here. If it says not found here, don't worry about that. It will say that normally if your image is not recognized or is not there. But even if it says it for disk tools, especially says it for disk tools sometimes, don't worry about it. Make sure this is unchecked. Make sure that says any. And you're going to browse to your Unix root here, which is your shared folder. So just in Basilisk 2, shared. Your press path, this will be replaced with a file in your users read or whatever your name is your users your name and it's like your basically your home folder in linux that's where your preferences file is going to go i'll show you how to delete that when we're done but you can load it from here if you need to but i don't think that feature works yet so we're going to skip that head to graphics and sound set the video type to window you might select full screen later on a, a fast newer machine select dynamic set this to whatever you want I like to do bigger because I've got a bigger screen. Audio settings can be ignored. Now you're going to check the user raw key codes. Only if you use key codes. And browse to your key codes file. This is a matter of taste right here. I'm going to leave them as the defaults. Under ports, set this to slurp. Everything else can be left alone. System, we got some changes to make here. Set your RAM size. You can you can leave it at 64. I can do I can do a little more. Set this to be Quadra 900. CPU type 68040. Now your ROM file. You need to put the path to your ROM file right there. Make sure both of those are checked. Now here, not much to change. Just check both these boxes and set this to 2048 or 2048. Should be all good now. Just go ahead and click start. And you and you can get you might get this dialog. Just click open. There you go. It's all working. So just press OK at that. You will initialize your disk here if you were using the GUI to create it, but you can skip that step since we created that since we created them using HFS using HFS Utils GUI. What you're gonna want to do first is open your Unix disk. Once again, here that here are all the part files we transferred from the folder the shared folder. You're going to just take all of these parts here, you're going to copy them into your installer parts disk. This usually doesn't take longer than a minute or so, but as you can see, it takes, it takes a minute at least. So I'm going to let this run. I'm going to keep the recording run, running because really it doesn't take that long. But a brief overview, I do want to warn everyone of something. The reason I got that error in the previous video of this, of this like, this tutorial, in the previous video of this, I got that error because I selected certain networking components that have an, have like a trap or something. It's like a, I don't know, some kind of fault, some error, and it it'll make it to where you can't boot usually unless I think you press it's either Control key or something. You can press it while starting, and it's like a safe mode. But you can try, you can do that if you want, but it didn't work for me. I heard, I've heard in the comments some people it has worked for, but don't select those components. I, I prefer easy install. It'll take care of everything for you. If you do a custom install, don't select certain networking components that can cause that because sometimes it's not going to work. So now we're in the installer parts disk. Go ahead and open the first one, part one. Use the SMI. Agree to the license agreement. It will just go ahead and verify it. You'll see another icon appear on the desktop. Go ahead and click this, click installer, then press continue. Now this is what I was talking about. Make sure you switch the disk to say Mac OS or whichever name you named it for the place to install it, the one gigabyte hard drive image in my case. Set this to easy install if you want. Custom, don't do custom remove. Custom install will do some more advanced stuff and let you select certain components. I don't recommend that unless you know what you're doing because sometimes it is going to give you components that don't work with this system. So I'm going to do easy install. We're just going to press install. 
Okay, it's doing its thing here. It, this, the, in fact, it's surprising to me because the copying of the files tends to take longer than the install. But you'll notice it's going pretty quick. It's already almost halfway. We're almost done, guys. I know it's a lot, but once this finishes, there's just a couple more preferences to change, and voila, we got everything. So now, just close these. I'm gonna go ahead. You're gonna go to special and shut down. Normally, the Bassless 2 window closes for you. If it doesn't, you force quit it. Sometimes it needs a little kick. We're gonna run the GUI again. Remove disk tools and installer parts. I like to keep installer parts in this folder though, in the disk tools in case you want to do more installs later. Go ahead and switch right over to system and set this to Mac 2 CI. Press start. Boom. There you go. Everything is running from this file right here now. So yeah guys, that's going to do it for this video. If you have any problems, feel free to comment and I'd be more than happy to help you guys. I'm going to go ahead and shut this down now. And there you go, guys, a working macOS classic system, 7.5.3. So I hope this video was better than the previous one where I got the error and it wasn't really that good of a video in my opinion. So, yeah, anyways, that's going to do it for this video. Everyone, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.